Hey guys, welcome to this episode where I upgrade my anycubic photon with a dual z-axis rail system to get rid of some z-axis wobble. Z-axis wobble or z-wobble is a printing artifact that shows itself on vertical surfaces. Z-wobble is a sort of cyclic pattern spread over many layers. It should not be confused with layer lines. So, I have started by making a test print to confirm that what I see is really Z-wobble. Okay, it seems that my photon has caught the Z-wobble disease. Since I have a classic photon with a single rail bearing system, I decided to upgrade it with a dual rail. My upgrade consists of a solid piece of milled and anodized aluminium made by Physics Anonymous that I ordered from their website a while ago. I also got a set of two linear rail bearings that I ordered from eBay. I could only get hold of the 250mm version though. Okay, let's do this. First of all, I need to remove the build plate and the vat. It's really a good idea to keep the vat at a safe location where the sensitive FEP fill is protected. Because you never know what happens. Next step is to take some more precautions and cut out a piece of cardboard. I will tape it over the display glass to avoid breaking or scratching it. I'm checking the height of the set rail and it seems that I unfortunately need to hack off a couple of centimeters from the linear rails. We can now remove the screws for the build plate holder. These screws are quite heavy so make sure that you don't drop them on top of the display. I know it's protected by the cardboard but uh, why take risks? Next we need to remove the screws that holds the Z-axis stepper motor in place. Make sure that you catch the motor when the last screw comes loose. And we also need to remove the screws for the fork optocoupler. That is the end stop switch that is used for homing the Z-axis. And we also need to remove the access panel on the back. Now carefully tilt the machine and remove the four screws that holds the set rail. Make sure that you catch the set rail when you remove the last screw. So let's keep track of all the different parts so we don't lose anything.
The blue thing on top of the rail doesn't really do anything, but it uh, kind of looks nice, so we will keep it. So, this is the stock rail system of the classic Photon. I don't like that design at all. It needs to be constantly adjusted and tuned to keep the correct tension. The linear rail bearings on the other hand doesn't need any adjustment. They just need to get a good clean up from all the oil and gunk from the factory. But now the tricky part begins, and I'm starting to get second thoughts about this. I think that I will make a call to a friend who has much better tools than I have. I borrowed a proxon saw to cut the rails to the correct length. My friend also suggested that we should use his CNC mill. We just need to download a 3D model of the linear rail as a guide for the holes and make a 3D design that we can run through the CAM software. Easy! if you know how to do it. I have no clue how to do this, but luckily my friend does. What can I say? The result is perfect. In comparison, the linear rail is not so perfect, but they have the correct length. Let's attach the linear rail bearings to the Z rail.
I will keep the screws loose until I have aligned everything. I need something that is flat so I can align the assembly, so I will use a sheet of glass. I place the rail assembly with the front downwards towards the glass. It is important to press everything down onto the glass surface before tightening the screws. Here I'm checking that the side of the rails are flush with the front. And it's time to assemble the bearings. The sledge should move without any obstruction. So let's tighten all the screws. and check that everything is okay. And it's time to assemble everything together again. It's the same procedure as the disassembly, but in reverse order of course. Make sure that you tighten the said rail screws properly. Whoops, watch out for that. And the stepper motor screws should be fairly tight as well. Mm -hmm. 
and we can finally close up the cover on the back side. But the big question is, will it work? Let's make a smoke test with a homing cycle. Yes, it seems to work, or at least it's looking good so far. First print will of course be the set wobble tube piece, so we can see if there are any improvements in the performance of my photon after the mod. My first impression of the new set rail is that there are none of the strange sounds that the old rail had when moving or changing direction. The result of the first test print speaks for itself. There are no trace of the recurring patterns on the left sample if you compare it with the right one. There are still some vertical lines caused by the pixelization from the LCD mask, but these pieces were printed without any anti-aliasing, so that is only to be expected. My second print was this female zombie, which is a 3D model from the video game Dying Light. This model was printed with four times anti-aliasing to smooth out the voxels and it scaled to approximately 1 16th scale. With this I want to thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful. See you in the next episode. Happy modeling and take care.